So I just kind of finished up the ending scene of the Thermobob video. Uh, if you guys haven't seen that video and you want to, I can put a link for it down in the description. Today though, what I'm gonna do is mount one of my many Garmin GPSs that I keep purchasing on eBay uh, because I do not like to have to switch a GPS to whatever bike it is that I wanna ride. I guess this one I took off because it's it's getting washed, but there it is. And I bought a third for the Kaler 650, but because apparently Kawasaki can't afford to put a 12 volt socket on the base model, I'm gonna have to do that myself. So I've got the 3D cycle parts, plug and relay here. This should be pretty easy to install. I've already got the panel removed here. If you guys need to see that, it's really pretty simple, uh, but you can check out that Thermobob video uh, just in the, the first minute or two, uh, I show you how to remove that. Just a couple fasteners and then it just pops directly off of the machine. And once that's removed, you have access to the Phillips head screw here, which is what's holding on this little cap here. And then this relay is gonna get popped right into this clip right there. And I think you can pull this off, but I actually zip tied my uh, temperature gauge wire to the back of it. So I'm gonna leave it in place. You can pull it off if you like. If you wanted to do that, it just pops straight off of the little catch that it's on there. We'll get that removed. There we go. Sorry you didn't get to see that, but I didn't want to lose my screw. So anyway, then that just pops off like that. This thing, you just have to twist the bottom of it off. Um, what? Really anticipating having to thread it in there, but okay. And that looks like that's just gonna kinda flop around down there, I guess. And this guy just gets put over the wires and twisted onto the backside. So with that on there good and tight, the next thing we're gonna have to do is find a spot to plug these. And it looks like those are tucked right up in the top up here. I think I can actually get better access in there by just popping this out of here. Got a little, whoops, a little bit more room to work then, hopefully. Take this one out here too. There we go. Pretty hard to tell, uh, but basically what you're looking for is that male end needs to go kind of all the way through the female end, kind of protrude out the other side, and then there's kind of a inset ring on the male portion uh, that there are some kind of clamping parts that little teeth that stick down from the female end that click that into place and if you don't go in there far enough then it can just rattle itself out. So before I button anything back up I'm going to give this a test so I'm going to insert a USB adapter in there. This is not the GPS nor the cable that I'll be using but I'm just going to stick this in here and turn the key on. And look at that. I was a little worried there for a second. So we've got power. So before I mount the GPS, I'm gonna kind of button the rest of this up and get the bike put back together. In order to get better access to that GPS bar, I'm gonna pull the windscreen off. That is pretty simple to do, just four fasteners here. The plan was gonna to be to use this Mob Up Designs 3D printed mount. However, uh, for some reason, Kawasaki decided that they wanted to make their GPS bar bigger than everybody else's. So I had to kind of grind out the center of this a bit to make that diameter a little bit larger. I think it should still work out okay. I uh, can't say that I would necessarily recommend this. I'd probably buy a GPS mount that's actually made for that size bar. But with some double-sided carpet tape in there, I think that should work out okay. I'm actually gonna lop off the top section of this, similar to what I did on the Tenere 700. I kinda like that that's a little bit more uniform and I'm gonna mount the GPS kind of as low as it can be and don't need that top section at all. Um, I do like this because it allows you to mount that GPS pretty much flush to the mount. Obviously, if you VHB tape it directly to the mount like I did, you are not able to remove it uh, very easily anyways. And you'll also have to add some countersunk holes in here um, just to make sure that that has a flat place to sit. I'm gonna get this lopped off. And we'll get this mounted up. Now here's the part where I just kind of have to guess what angle this is going to need to be at. I'm not going to be able to do too much moving around once it's on there. The trick with this stuff is good even pressure all over the place. 
if you do it right, surfaces are clean, stuff will stick really, really well. So I've already kind of pre-positioned this from the back so I know exactly where I need to put it. And I'm also going to watch my cable that I got plugged in here to make sure that that's not going to be in a bad spot. How's it look? Usually I like to mount them just a little crooked so I have something to focus on while I'm riding down the road. But it seems like I actually did a pretty decent job this time. I definitely wouldn't recommend doing this with a $300 GPS, but since I only paid 25 bucks for this on eBay, I don't feel too bad about it, but I do have to put some pressure on it. Make sure it sticks. We've got the windshield on here now for the full effect. I think, uh, I think I liked it better with the windshield off. I really wish that that was stuck like straight up and down like the Tenere. Oh well. The GPS fits in there pretty well though. No issues with height at all. Should be able to get to my button still. If you guys have some sort of hand guards like this on your KLR and you plan on using a large plug like this, it's uh, not gonna work. And honestly, even as flush mount as this is, this still is going to stick off way too far and is going to cause some interference there. So what I'm going to do is order a longer version of one of these, uh, just a 90-90. I think this could definitely be a lot closer to the panel here. I don't really know why this sticks off that far. It's kind of goofy, but this is definitely not an ideal spot for this. A little bit disappointed in that. I did kind of come up with a short-term solution that I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, should work well enough anyway. Just a old GoPro cable there. Bars do get still a little bit too close to be all that comfortable, but seems like it should work. So I took this for a very short ride yesterday and it didn't take too long before this thing was telling me that it lost its power supply. I don't know if there's actually an issue or not, but uh, either way, just by grabbing this, uh, I was kind of doing some investigating to see why it was telling me that. Um, when I would hang on to this, just going even like 30 miles an hour down the road, this thing has a really, really hard buzz to it. I actually took the Tenere 700 out right after that, uh, just to kind of see how bad that one was shaking, and that was like almost completely still. There was like no vibration at all. So before I destroy this, if I haven't already, uh, I'm gonna peel this back off and then try something a little goofy. There's a, a quad lock product that you can attach to a dampener, but those are out of stock right now. <laughs> And I've got this thing laying around. I don't even remember where the heck this came from. My GPS is going to stick out a little bit farther than I would like. But I figure uh, I'll give it a shot. And we'll see what we get here anyways. Still works. So I got this all taped up. We'll stick it on and see what we come up with here. This is probably the goofiest thing I've ever done. That's not true. All right, let's see. I'm actually gonna mount this a bit higher so I can still see my regular dash when I'm standing maybe. Nah, maybe not. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's dampened all right. Uh, it's probably gonna be pretty wobbly also. Things I come up with sometimes, I tell ya. I like the lecture look pretty good when I'm sitting on the bike, but from the side profile, it sticks off about a half mile more than it needs to. Only thing left to do is take it out on the road, take it out on the trail, and see if it falls off. 